your sight. Amen. But the blood is still moving. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for our children's church. Amen. All kids, you know you're a child. <laughs> I bleed the blood on that. You know you're a child and you need to go to the children's church. All children. Go to the children's church. Amen. 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 Do we have any visitors today? Please stand. Amen. Amen. Any visitors, please stand. God for you today. We thank God that you came and chose to worship with us today. Amen. We hope something that said or done that will affect your life that you'll get closer to Christ. Amen. And you can remain standing. The Ursas have something for you. We want you to fill it out and give it right back to them so we can stay in contact with you. Amen. At this time we're going to fellowship. Everybody find three people that you don't like and go and give them a high five and move them through some.
Amen. At this time, I believe we'll hear from the choir. Amen. 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 
fourth Saturday in July. We will be washing cars. We'll be selling tickets for $5. Now, if you want the little shine and all that other stuff, we're going to charge you 10 All right, but come on out, support your church. It's going towards homecoming. Amen? All right, that's all I'm going to say about that, Pastor. It's your turn. Come on, y'all give me praise on that. Y'all clapping like that. I thought I was going to show up for real. <laughs> Amen. We thank God. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, clap your hands. That's good. If you're glad to be in St. Luke, make some noise. Y'all should have been there when you were talking about homecoming. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. And y'all know what I come to do around now. Get your offering ready to give to God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. While you get your offering ready, let me say how proud I am of St. Luke Church uh, and your giving. You guys are giving and y'all becoming cheerful givers. Amen. Amen. And we don't need a church full to make God's house full. Y'all doing a marvelous job, but I got to tell you, you got to keep on going. Amen. We're sticking to the mission. And anybody that don't want to go in our direction, you know what I said last Sunday. I ain't going to say it this Sunday. You, you remember what I said. Amen. So I'm thankful for you all. Another thing, Vacation Bible School is this week. Vacation Bible School is this week. I can't hear nobody. I'm going to say it one more time. Vacation Bible School is this week. All right. I need everybody here at least 545 or at 6 o'clock. Grown folks, I know they said 6 to 8, but I'm teaching. We ain't going to be here for two hours. We're going to do a little teaching. We'll let you go on your way. Amen. 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 Everybody got their gifts? Amen. Come on, stand up with your gifts in your hand. The screen is not up there, but y'all know it. Lift your gifts up high in the air. Ready, set, go. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. You can follow the ushers around if you had never a credit card. Sister Denise pray that is going out to the best of you to take that from you. consistently puts up our services. Amen. Y'all can do a little bit better than that. Online so we can come back and reconnect on what God has spoken to us. So we thank God for both of them. Amen. And the last, I want to thank God for the choir. They're doing such a good job. And I thank God they didn't eat my now late Thursday. Amen. Amen. Y'all get a choir another hand to take up.
sermon was a cheap I have. The second one, if somebody remember, what was the second sermon? Yes, the second, last Sunday. That was the Sunday y'all had folks coming up here fanning me while I was preaching. I don't hear nobody. I can't hear nobody. You can't do about it. Is that what it was? Sticking to the mission is a serious title. Lord have mercy. Y'all trying. I, I ain't going until y'all tell me. I need you to survive. Master in a heavy load. Lord have mercy. Who, pay? Who is that? That's why I get my now lady, so y'all uh, y'all take my now lady, don't tell them. <laughs> Karen and Sharon, now you were listening, weren't you? All right, all right. <laughs> Mastering a heavy load. And this Sunday, church, we're going to talk about the dangers of familiarity. The dangers of familiarity. Go to your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 11 very familiar passage of scripture and story of the death of Lazarus, one of the few that God raised from the dead. John, the 11th chapter. You know our custom when you find it, stand for the reading and reverence of God's holy and divine word. When you found it, shout who there it is. When you're still looking, say hold on. I'm holding. <laughs> John chapter 11. The death of Lazarus. I think everybody's found it. King James Version says these words. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus. Of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore her, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abided two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that said he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews of, of late salt to stone thee. Goeth thou there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? Question mark. If any man walk in the day, uh, in, the, in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walketh in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of his sleep. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These things, verses 11, we bring emphasis. These things said he after that he said unto them, our friend, somebody shout friend, friend. Lazarus sleeping. Right. I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Again, our title of the day, church, is the dangers of familiarity. I believe that God allows us to get in some dangerous circumstances that may leave that circumstance with a transformational message. I'm going to say that again. I believe God allows us to get in dangerous circumstances that we may leave with transformational messages. This weekend I had the opportunity of taking a break from Nashville. And I went to what we know as the Rocky Mountains. And my testimony is any man that uh, is made ought to have his feet on the ground and not in the air. But I went in the mountains and a 
upon my journey in the mountains church I find myself trying to get back to my preferred destination going up a mountain but took a wrong turn and in taking the wrong turn church I started to search for what thought was familiar upon my previous journey in the mountains. And looking for familiar spots, a familiar road, familiar social sites, I end up going too high up. I start looking down. And in looking down church, I got afraid. Can I be real about it? Myself trying to bag up and got stuck. Holding on to their life. And you know when you get in trouble, you start talking to the Lord. You start saying, Lord, if I get out of this, I won't eat pork skins no more. <laughs> you know I'm right. Lord, if I get out of this, I won't go out buy another lottery ticket again. <laughs> Lord, if I get out of this, all oh, my cursing going to go away. <laughs> so I start talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, get me out of this. I won't eat pork skins no more. I won't get another scratch off ticket. And I show, I'm talking about myself, curse nobody out no more. And holding on to their life, God sent somebody 10 minutes afterwards to push me back on the ledge. And I was able to come down on the mountain and not until I took the time to look at the text, God showed me exactly why he put me in that place. And the message today that we will discover through the death of Lazarus is that a lot of us, in sticking to the mission, or whatever mission you may have, whether it be being a great mother, an entrepreneur, a great leader, or whatever your case may be, you are trying to get to your destination looking for familiar places and familiar people and you find yourself in detours because God is trying to tell you that looking for familiar people won't get you on this journey I'm trying to take you to and going to familiar places will not get you to the destination I desire you to be any faster the reason why you're lost because you're looking for what is familiar but this is the danger of what's looking familiar you find yourself looking at familiar things, forsaking the divine direction that God has already aligned for your life. And this may be a word for somebody that the very reason he puts you in this dangerous situation is so you can stop depending on what looks familiar and start paying attention to the help that he's designed for your hands to get to the destination that he desires you to be. And I wonder, am I talking? I'm from the preacher. I ain't teaching this one. Is there anybody here that has to learn or had to learn that you had to depend on nothing less than Jesus Christ and depend on his divine instruction? Mama may have failed you and daddy may have failed you. People, your friends may have turned they back on you. But when you start looking to the hill, from which coming your help, you found out that God had new ways for you to get to the destination that he desired you to be. And your testimony is, if it had not been for God on your side, you don't know. But God is too unique 
and his likeness to do things the same way. And what God is trying to let us know that if we are going to reach the mission in which us as a church have been assigned, you have to know that God will put you in some unordinary spaces to bring out extraordinary results. And you have to be prepared, church, to hearken your ears to the instruction of God. And sometimes, church, looking for great results will be uncomfortable. Sometimes we will come out with the short end of the sick. And sometimes we will come out looking like God. God, where are you? But God is trying to tell you, like I told you last Sunday, if you're never disappointed, church, then you will never apply faith. And if you never apply faith, God can never do his work. I think I ought to say that again. If you're never disappointed, you will never need faith. And if you never have faith, God can never do I wish I said it again. If you're never disappointed, then you can never have faith. And if you never have faith, God can't do his because the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. So God allows our circumstances to be greater so that God can apply himself into our lives. I remember my mom, I have a country mother, and in the summertime I never was in the house. My mom would be cooking, cleaning, whatever having a conversation. And she'd be in the house, I'd be outside, and it'd be up to 90-something degrees, sometimes 102. And I wanted Kool-Aid one day. And she kept saying no. And I said, Mom, it's hot. I want Kool-Aid. It's hot. Y'all hear me? I want Kool-Aid. And she says, no. I said, okay, mom, it's hot. I need Kool-Aid. She says, okay. Mom, I went out three more hours from the previous no. I need Kool-Aid. And she waited at church all the way to the sun went down. And she said, Nick, come get your Kool-Aid. I, I got in the house, I picked up the jar, and I drank it all in a split of a minute. And then I posted, the Mama, why in the world did you wait tonight to give me the Kool-Aid? And she told me, she says, the greater the weight, the intense, the gratification, the more you wait, the thankful that you will be. And maybe that is what God is trying to tell us and you and your desire to get to your destination. The longer you wait to receive what God has for you, the greater appreciative you would be. But I think I ought to be a pastor to help you while you're on your way to your journey. You ought to not wait till the battle was over. You ought to go ahead and show God I can be appreciative right now. Is there anybody here that can lift your hands and say, God, I may not be there right now. I may not have what I want to have, but I can show, no, show you a sign that I'm appreciative to my and God, in a way to bless me, I'll be satisfied. Yeah. 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 All principles apply to what God is trying to teach us in Lazarus. Yeah. Yeah. Lazarus, whom is Mary and Martha's brother, <laughs> has died in a fruitful place yeah. on the slope incline of a mountain. They loaded him down to the bottom of the mountain to into a cemetery, a cave, tomb, whatever have you. Come on. And he's there covered by a rock. And the word has gotten to Jesus. Jesus is not in the same place. Lord, come on, come on. the one in whom you love, yeah. is dead. Yeah. Jesus says, I'm going to wait. He waits uh, two days where he walks and decides to get up after the wait of two days to say, I'm going to get Lazarus up because Lazarus is sleeping. Yeah. Listen what the disciples say, church, and I'm going to be swift. The disciple says, Lord, you may not want to go back there because there are people ready to kill you. And Jesus says, I'm not 
going at night, but I'm going in the day so that all of you all pay attention to my surroundings because there's a job I got to do. Watch church, what happens? He gets to the place of Bethany at the gate. One of the sisters meet him where he was and says, Lord, if you had a been here, my brother Lazarus. Y'all see that? Y'all see the weight, the weight extension that now Lazarus Bible declares have been dead four days. They waited four days, and this has some biographical uh, distinctions to it. Because watch this church, because in four days they had to do all of their contemporaries and cleaning the body and putting perfume on the body and causing noise to the body because they had no true signs to if he was dead. All they know is that he could be in a coma or he could be knocked out sleep or he could be all drifted off somewhere in a sunken place. But they waited four days before entering him to, into a cave to really see if he was truly dead. And after the four days, they put him in the cave. And I heard Jesus trying to tell us the reason why he had to wait for four days because if he showed up in time earlier, the credit would have been to the doctors, the credit would have been to the nurse, the credit would have been to the mortician, but I'm waiting for your life, so the credit would not fall on others or yourself, but it will fall on me, and this is a word for all of us huh, who are motivated to serve God, and who are motivated to be successful, God got you waiting, so the credit wouldn't be on you, he got us waiting, so the credit can be on him, and this is all I'm trying to tell you, church, don't lose faith than God because he's sightless. God is not trying to be sight in front of you. God is trying to live in you because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So he wants us to experience these things, the waiting process. Bag up church to really discover where he's at in this thing. Why Why is it a danger to be familiar? All right. The Bible will declare that Lazarus is almost like a brother to Jesus. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. The Bible will declare that it seems as if God, or Jesus rather, would have showed up when he died. Y'all right. do remember the first sermon I preached to y'all in this series. John the Baptist's head got cut off yeah. because the king fell in love with a strip. That that John the Baptist church was somebody Jesus loved. And when Jesus heard of it, he showed up. <laughs> All right, let me try it again. In chapters and verses before now, 5,000 had to been saved. He showed up. Okay? The disciples were stuck out of the stormy sea and they called on Jesus' name. He showed up. Okay, y'all don't hear me. He was in the boat, and they were struggling with the water problem. God showed up. They were at a wedding that came two fish, uh, no, not, not two fish, but six, uh, six pots, water pots, and they need to be turned into wine. Guess what? Mary said, son, come here. He showed up. But when Lazarus needs the one whom he loved, Jesus don't show up. And I truly believe Jesus didn't show up because Lazarus needed him. Jesus didn't show up because there was people watching Lazarus that needed him. And I come today to tell some of you all, you where you are and you're victimized because God is using you as bait to catch the big fish. And that's all I'm trying to tell you. You be encouraged because God not only used those who are prosperous and got the upper hand, but God used those who are at the bottom and got the short end of the stick as well. You can still be used, and God can still use you to save thousands. Lazarus is dead. Jesus says, I'm glad he is for your sake. Because now, church, that you have exceeded your limits and your burdens. It has now gotten to the season here in St. Luke of persons who have gotten burdens they can't seem to bear. And God told me to tell you he's glad it has happened for your sake. Because now that the burden has gotten a little heavier 
and you seem not to be able to bear it, he's trying to let you know, now you'll find out that can't nobody help you carry the load like I can. And even though I'm late, and even though I'm not on your time, when I show up, you still gonna appreciate my presence, because here's what you know, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I'm glad it happened. Say, I, I think the point I want to lend to you is that our God is benevolent. He understands our needs. He, he gets there and he realizes that Lazarus is dead and in fact been dead for four days, so much so that some birds have said that he even is a stink unto the natural man's nostril. And that now Jesus has come and he must go up a slope up to Judea, which is in the, the diaphragm of Jerusalem. He has to go up a seeming slope to get to where they are. And when he gets there, they meet him with disturbing news. As if they didn't believe what he could do. This is the case in point about the tremors and the dangers of familiarity. Like said in my thesis, when we think of familiarity, we have to be careful because we can mess around and get lost. Because the intended way God wanted you to go could be so clear, but you miss it looking for other direction. And God is trying to tell you, I'm trying to give you a greater blessing than what you had in the past. But if you only settle for what you had in the past, you'll never get what I have for you in the future. I don't hear nobody. If you settle for what you have in the past and never look for what I got for you in the future, you will never get greater. I'm going to say that again. If you settle for what you had in the past, you will never get what I have for you in the future. And I come to encourage you and tell you in getting what God has for you in the future, it's a stretching process. And anything stretches got to hurt. And I want to tell you, the more you hurt, the closer you're going to get. That's your encouragement. Walk out of this room with your hell held high that the worse it gets, hold on, the worse it gets for your life, the better it will be later on. And I come today to tell you, if you suffer a little while, God has something greater in store for you. Say, in his direction, church, that now after they've been disappointed because of their desire for familiarity, he says, Show me where you lay him. Show me where you lay him. And it's, a, it's, it's an instance that now Lazarus, because of his state by law, is dead. He's nothing more but an object. He's a, not a he, but he's now an it. So it's safe to say that for our exegesis, is that we can in place Lazarus when anything or any mission that sets before us. Right. Yeah. That a lot of us have put down the mission of the church. Yeah. Yeah. The mission of our families, our marriages, Amen. our businesses, Amen. our personal desires because we have not gotten fulfillment when we wanted it. Right. So we've laid our mission in a tomb. Because God didn't show up when we wanted him to. Our children are not getting to the place we wanted them to get and so we put our children in the tomb. Our community is not looking like Brentwood and not looking like Bellevue and Antioch and Mount Julia and Hermitage and Her Hendersonville. So we put South Nashville in the tomb. St. Luke ain't got the many members we used to have so we giving up on serving the community so we put St. Luke in the tomb. Our marriage is not fine desire. It's not what it used to be. It's not joy and pain, sunshine and rain. So we put our marriage in a tomb. And God is now saying now that what you have is dead. It's no more an object. It's no more a person. It's no more a place or a thing. But you now made it an it. And I need you to show me where you lay it. So the question now needs to be, church, if we're going to leave here not being the same way we came, and if we're going to surpass the dangers of our familiarity, we need to show God 
where we laid our children. Show God where we laid our church. Show God where you laid your marriage. You need to show God where you stored your joy. And listen here, this is what God is trying to show you. He's not going to go get it. He's expecting you to go get it. Because the true change is not when God starts making a move. It's when you make the first move and he come around and make the other ten. Who am I talking to in here? Who come in here looking for what you laid? Huh? Because when you laid it, huh, now you ain't got the power to get it out. Huh? But God showed up huh? and now it's time for you to go show them where you laid your stuff. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, show them where you laid it. And now, church, Christ is not going to the tomb to go get it. He's allowing those who put it there to participate in bringing it out. That what you are close to, even though you're close to it, you come distant with it. Be your children, your church, your marriage. He wants you to know, I'm going to rekindle the fire, but you got to trust in my direction. The way y'all met won't be how y'all reconnect. The way we were growing the first time as a church, we will grow this time as a church. If you trust in my direction, I can not only make y'all find each other again, but reconnect y'all and build a fire between y'all that will lift whatever you lower. Show me. I'm almost there. I feel Jesus in here. Somebody getting help today. Show me where you lay them. They get him there. And he calls its name. Y'all heard what I said. I didn't say call his name. Because it is dead. Y'all hear me? Because anything dead should have a proclamation of a gender, race, or nationality. It's going back to ashes, to ashes, dust. So he don't have a preferred name. But when Jesus gets there, Jesus, upon your faith of going to get what it is, calls out its name. Come on, come on, come on. Upon your listening to the direction of God, God transfers the it back to he. Before the he can answer for it. God Almighty, y'all missing it. Ah, y'all hear me, hear me well. God transitioned the it back to he upon your professional faith of going to get it in which you lay. And what God is trying to tell you, if you just give him the faith, he'll do the following and get you back to where you were supposed to be. And St. Luke, that's all I'm trying to come to tell y'all. God can get us back to where we need to be, but we got the faith. We have to have the faith to go get it. Not only that, church, he's saying, show me where you laid it. Well, it had to be for the family uh -huh. because now he's directing them to throw the stone away. And that is merely impossible for Mary and Martha All right. because these stones weren't small stones. Uh -huh. It took men tall in stature, uh -huh. wide in shoulder, yeah. right. strong in arm to move hundreds of pounds right. of stone. Yeah. A way for Lazarus uh -huh. to answer to the call of God. Yeah. Yeah. Church, it also picks back off of what I left this last Sunday. Yeah. That we cannot finish a goal without the help of others. Yeah. 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 That 
That's why you cannot finish a destination or a goal with familiar people or familiar places because in looking for familiar people to go on this journey with you, God may put up something hard where their minds and hearts can't handle. So you have to be hearkening your ears and opening your hearts up to new people and new places as God begins to take you to your preferred destination. You have to open your minds and hearts to the new people that may come in our church and the new leadership that God may give because when God gives newness, he brings freshness and when anything is fresh, it's overloaded to bless your life and the soon as you take away from the freshness of what God is trying to give you, you're taking away the blessing God is trying to bestow in your life. Mary and Martha, you participated in showing me, but you can't participate and moving the stone away. Oh, yeah. right. I'm getting to the end. Because yes, right. I'm going to have to throw another crack at this. I mean, so much in this. Right. And they move the stone away. Yeah. And he says, Lazarus, yeah. come forth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lazarus, uh -huh. come forth. Yeah. Lazarus, 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 I'm talking to a bunch of Lazarus, y'all ain't got a chance. Lazarus, try one more time. Hold on, Lazarus, Lazarus is. Children, they got to come out of this one. Your finances. 
Jesus and he keep you in it. I believe it that you're going to be hobbling and flopping. I know your marriage is not turning out like you should, but you got to come out hobbling and flopping. I know you're depressed in your mind. I know you got mental illnesses right now, but you got to come out of this one. Y'all can put your one time stand on your feet. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I know I should have been in a long time. I know I've been in a long time. Four days I've been in it. But I got to tell you, on this day, don't say, neighbor, this day, I got to come out. Is that anybody here? And say, I got to come out. I got to tell you, be not dismayed. Whatever be the time, God will for to take care of. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, God will try to take care of it. I said, want to take care of it. If you don't got to take care of it, show ya. I do this for myself. Huh? I 